It seems like productivity apps are multiplying like flies. And with so many options, how do we choose a note-taking app to reduce stress and unlock creativity to gain a competitive advantage? When helping thousands of people build extended brains, what I call a system of digital tools to navigate the internet, learn, and create our best work, I've realized that most of us approach choosing a notes app completely wrong. Our notes app is the central piece of our extended brain. And I know how easy it is to get distracted by these brand new features and hype, but we can have the most advanced toys and none of the results if we don't understand why they're useful. Think of it like deciding on what kind of car to drive. Of course, the first filter we go through is that the car has to meet our minimum standards of functionality, right? Like a 1950s gas guzzling hunk of metal, it probably doesn't make sense in 2024, right? We need some quality control. But once we do have that, then all cars pretty much do the same thing of getting you from point A to point B. Now it's up to preference and style. You wouldn't want a Prius if you go off-roading a lot, and you wouldn't want a Ferrari if you have four kids and a newborn, right? Well, maybe. This is the same approach we should take for building our extended brain. So to understand why I'm gonna recommend these note-taking apps, let me first share my must-have features list. Number one is tagging and relational linking. We wanna be able to link our pages together to form a network of ideas. This is super useful for organizing things in our mind so we can quickly find whatever we need to. Number two is accessibility. iOS app must, desktop apps must, Browser version, collaboration, you know the deal. We need to be able to access our notes at any time, anywhere. Number three is quick capture. We want to easily be able to capture things from the internet, anywhere, into our Extended Brain Notes app. And this includes written text, images, video, audio, memos, book notes, highlights, and everything else. And number four, which is kind of underrated, is the culture of the app itself. Is there a lot of help and support? Do they have a big Reddit community? How is the community itself? Are the people nice? Are they willing to share information? Because even if you are tech savvy, there are going to be times when you need help and support. And if it's hard to find or it doesn't exist, not a really great app. Number five, integrations with other apps and AI. AI is the future. And with advances in apps, AI can enhance our notes to think, analyze, and synthesize ideas between what we already know and form connections we never thought even possible. So if the app doesn't have native or at least strong integrations with AI, I won't even consider it. So based on these criteria, I've narrowed down hundreds of apps to this small list here. On the right, these are the ones that are more suited for power users. And on the left side, easier, clean, simple to use ones. As you can see, picking a notes app is much more manageable after this first filter. But now let's put it through our second filter, which is matching it to our learning style. And in order to do that, we have to identify a brain type. So according to preliminary science, there are three distinct brain types. These vary on a spectrum of sensitivity. On one end, we have the resistant types, which we call kumas. They prefer stability, routines, and comfort. Then we have operator types, which are called toras. They prefer structure and clear goals. And finally, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the adaptable types, which we call kitsunes. They prefer flexibility and technical details. We've compiled all the research into a quick quiz to identify your brain type, and I'm gonna leave a link below. It's free to take and reflect on. But based on over 35,000 people in our community who have taken this quiz, this is the breakdown of the learner types we've discovered. 20% of our community are Kumas, or the stability types. Kumas prefer reliability, simplicity, and familiarity in their learning system. They like to deep dive and explore the most useful things, and they're often looking for the most practical knowledge insights. They like collecting and categorizing ideas, combining old and new stuff. Now, if you're a Kuma, you might be somewhat of a deep researcher. You like to take your time. You like to learn deeply and immerse yourself in few projects in your studies. If I were to give my recommendations for Kumas, the best ones would be Apple Notes and Notion. These note-taking tools are simple, they're aesthetically pleasing, they're very reliable, and they have this almost intuitive and comforting vibe to them. Like, you already know how to use them before you even sit down and use them. Even though they don't seem like it, both of these tools have really powerful folder organization and structure that are helpful for project-focused work, as well as going deep with your learning. So next up, 30% of our community are Torahs, or operator types. Torahs prefer structure, organization, and clear objectives for their learning system. Torahs are planners, goal setters, and like to strategize. They focus on practicality and function, as well as aesthetics, just to keep things very organized. So if you like to strategize, you like figuring things out, you like watching and making progress in your work, and that 
energizes you, you might be a Torah. Or which tools are best for Torahs? I would definitely recommend Tana and Notion. These are really powerful note-taking tools and can double up as project management tools. Since Torahs really like structure and clear goals, these tools can have unique dashboards that make them super collaboration friendly. These apps can be very visually pleasing and structured, so you can build a dream note-taking and learning workflow that also doubles as a project management dashboard. And finally, 50% of our community are Kitsunes. These are adaptable, creative types. Kitsunes are very technical, and they have a very chaotic organizational style. They love having customization, and they tend to just learn by following their curiosity, and they're very spontaneous with things, right? New ideas come, they write it down, they might move on. They usually have multiple interests and multiple projects always going on, and they bounce back and forth between them because their mind tends to wander a lot. And because of that, you know, they're daydreamers, they're very imaginative, and they learn very quickly, but also forget very quickly. They like to think tank, you know, they need time to cook, and they're always trying to create new ideas, even if they don't actually know where those ideas are headed. So if I were to give my recommendations for which apps are most suitable for Kitsunes, it would be Obsidian or Tana. These apps are modern with a slightly steeper learning curve, but have far more flexibility and customization. And they can have workflows that are really chaotic, yet organized because everything can be linked together, it can be tagged, and it can be resurfaced at any time. But if you are a Kitsune and you're not interested in like a really power feature or workflow, then I also would recommend Notion. It's a lot simpler, it's still versatile, and it can create whatever kind of structure you want. So I would just take a moment now. Did any of those descriptions I talked about instantly vibe with you? Do you see yourself normally as someone more structured or someone more spontaneous? Are you a power user who builds customized workflows? Or do you really just want something simple and reliable over anything else? Now, it's important to remember that there's no right or wrong choice here, right? All these apps are great. And this is, of course, is just my opinion. And it's up to you to experiment with this at the end of the day, because your extended brain is yours, right? It's personal. And it might even make sense for you to use multiple of these apps simultaneously. For example, my learning style is a blend of Kitsune and Torah. I lean more Kitsune, but I do have a lot of Torah tendencies as well. And so the apps that I personally use every day are Tana for personal knowledge management and Notion for organizing, collaborating, and managing my business and my team. But that took a long time for me to arrive at. I tried a whole bunch of tools in the meantime, and who knows, it might change again once things update or I discover a different workflow that I want to explore. And so to escape from analysis paralysis, I would say just commit to an app right now. You know, play around with it for a few weeks, even a few months, and you can always course correct or change direction in the future. But once you have decided on which note-taking app you want to serve as the core of your extended brain, what should it be able to do? Well, if you want a behind the scenes look into my Notion workspace that I personally use, then check out this video over here. It's going to answer all of your questions.